I don't know whether how life is today in your area, in your area of influence. But in my area of influence, sometimes life is not very good. Sometimes there are things that I expect, there are things that I've prayed for, there are things that I've looked forward to, but they don't always happen. It, do it doesn't always turn out the way that I want. And sometimes it's frustrating. There are times in my life that I've felt like I've been forgotten. I look around, I look at my friends, I look at people we went to college with, I look at people we qualified with, I look at people that we've worked together with, and I see there are several miles ahead of me and ask God, why have you forgotten me? I look at people that I have known, we lived in the same village somewhere in Zimmerman, and I see where they are today, and they are way beyond where I am, and ask God, I'm also one of your children. Have I been forgotten? And I don't know about you, but I ask God, and I remind God that I'm also one of your children. And so this morning, I want to speak on something called the bounce back power. The bounce back power. In that sometimes, it is not that God is not working in our lives. Sometimes it's not that God is not working for our good. Sometimes it's not that there is, not, there is the lack of the congruence. The congruence is there, but we have no bounce back. We have no capacity of bouncing back. Let me tell you what I mean. Many years ago, I think I must have been in standard, school, uh, standard 6 in Nairobi South Primary School. The uh, sports master, Mr. Patel, had trust in me, and he called me to go and help him one Saturday in his sports store. You know, where all these things for the stores, for the sports used to be kept. And when I, I went there, the, there were so many things that were there. It was a complete mess. I think it had never been sorted out in years. But one thing that caught my eye, being a, a sixth grader, was football. I was not the best player. From my village, we don't have any player who is recorded or who is even recognized. We don't have play. We just saw the ball. The ball was kicking, and you can kick it in any direction, and that's fine. But I saw, I saw the football. But the footballs were all deflated. They had stayed there for so long, there was no air in them. They were completely deflated. And so he was asking me to move those deflated balls into one side, and the ones that were inflated on the other side, and the nets on the other side, so we can look at least pleasant. And after we had done that, the next thing that he told me that he wanted to do is to take those deflated balls and he was, showing, he was going to show me how to inflate them. And so we started inflating those balls with Mr. Patel. Lo and behold, when those balls were full of air, they had life in them. You could bounce them, and the more air you put on them, the higher they bounced. The little air that was inside there, if you bounce them, it doesn't bounce as much. But if you put a lot of air in it, it bounces much higher. That's the bounce back power that I'm talking about. Sometimes what we lack in our lives is that bounce back power. We have no energy. We are so deflated. When it comes to reading the word of God, we don't read it. It doesn't make sense to us. When we go home, we just eat our ugali to nalala. We forget to pray. We become so deflated. And we start wondering, why are things not, in, not working for us? Why are things not working for me the way they are working for somebody else? It's because we are so deflated. We can't bounce back. And so this morning, we are talking about, about bouncing back, the capacity to bounce back. Isaiah is even more demo, uh, dramatic. In uh, chapter 49, he says, I don't get it. God has left me. My master has forgotten I even exist. In verse 15 and 18, he says, Can a mother forget the infant at her breast? Can she walk away from the baby she bore? Then he says, but even if mothers forget, I would never forget you. You may be deflated, but I'm not going to forget you. You may be out of everything that you have. You may even forget that I exist as your God, but I will not forget you. And today I want to remind us about the seasons that sometimes that we live in. There are times that we feel that we are not at the right time. We are not at the right place when people are being blessed when people are being aerated, when people are being put on air in them so that they can have that bounce back power. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to 8 says, For there is a season and a time for everything under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, 
a time to weep, and indeed, a time to laugh. There is also a season when men went to war. And there is a time that men also stayed home for those wounds to heal. This morning I'm asking, what season are you in? Are you in a season where you are inflated or are you in a season where you are deflated? What is your season like? It is important that you examine yourself where you are because this message will not mean anything to you until you know where you are. Where am I? Where am I as Julius Mwangi? Where am I? Am I inflated or am I deflated? How am I looking at my tomorrow? How am I looking at my present circumstances? How am I looking at my struggles today? Am I hopeful? Am I hopeless? Where am I? You know, our lives are disrupted by so many things. And most of the things, the way we, mis we misinterpret the seasons. We look at one season and we think it is the other season. We plant in one season and it is a different season and we wonder why is our harvest not even there because we did things in the wrong, in the wrong season. Isaiah 49, 13 to 16 says, declare, declares, Shout for joy, O heavens, rejoice, O earth, burst into song, O mountains, for the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. I am alone. I don't know where my Savior is, I don't know where my God is, and yet all my trust is in the Lord. But to encourage you, friends, that regardless of the season that you may find yourself in, that there is still that capacity and that, that ability for you to bounce back. It doesn't matter what situation you are in. It doesn't matter what the report said, whether it is a doctor's report, whether it is your principal's report, whether it is your boss's report, it does not matter at this point in time. And that's why I love my God. That's why I love my God. Those things are just humans. They are human records. But when it comes before my God, all this does not matter. There is a way that you need to be able to approach, to approach God. There is a particular way, a, a certain pattern that you need to approach God. And once we know how to approach God, then these things do not matter anymore. Because we are going to be, to be pumped up. We are going to be at that moment when we can be able to recognize our seasons. Because we've been properly aerated. Because even for footballers, there's a time they play football and there's a time they start sitting back. There is a season for everything. Are we together? I want to talk to you about one man, and this is a man I'm, I believe that you must have heard about him. And his name is Mephibosheth. 2 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 8. And we are going to talk about three of them. This is just one of them. So I can put this message home where I believe that the Lord wants us to, to reach. Mephibosheth was the son of Jonathan. Jonathan was the son of Saul. And, Saul. and Jonathan was David's best friend. They were buddies. They did things together. They encouraged one another. They went to war together. And as a matter of fact, Jonathan actually helped David to win the war against his own father. But when Jonathan uh, died, David had wanted to extend kindness to his, friend, to his friend Jonathan's family. And so he solicited help from one man called Ziba from the house of Saul to assist him to find out, go and bring to me all the families, all the family members of Jonathan that need help. And there was one man that was brought in and his name was Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth had had a troubled upbringing. At one time, with the nurse or the person who was taking care of him, when they were running away from an, from an attack, they, she, she dropped the baby, and the baby fell down, and the baby got crippled. You know the story. And so his life was kind of troubled. He had no hope in the, in the new kingdom of David. He had no assurance. He had lived a troubled life. Probably there was less than enough. There was, there, was more, there, was, there was not enough for him to eat. There was not enough for him to share. There was, not enough, there was no opportunities for him. Not like we know today. If today you're, you're, you're handicapped in one way or another, there are services that are available. At that particular time, there are probably no services available. And so he struggled. He struggled in his walking. He struggled in places where other people, able-bodied able people could, could manage. He struggled in those areas. And so he was a person who had lived a life of hopelessness. But he was remembered. He was remembered by this man called Ziba. Ziba was nothing but a servant. He remembered, yes, there is one man, and his name is Mephibosheth. And they brought this man before, the, before David, and David looked at him, and, and he did not have mercy or pity on him. He looked at him as one of the children of Jonathan that he wanted to bless. And he gave him land, 
And on top of giving him land, he also made sure that every day when David was having a meal, that Mephibosheth would be sitting right there with him. Let's look at Mephibosheth's life. Mephibosheth could have looked at himself at that time, looked at other young, abled men, men who'd be able to go to war, men would probably go and look, you know, have beautiful brides, men would have their own homes, and you'd look at himself and probably despise himself. I am not one of them. I will never be. I will always be looked down upon because I'm a cripple. I will always be looked down because this is who I am. I'm limited. Let me tell you, those are the eyes of men. God does not use his eyes of men. When God used David to bless Mephibosheth, it did not matter. It did not matter how long has he been in that situation. It did not matter how, much, how many thoughts that he had of giving up. It did not matter how, much, how many struggles that he had gone through or how many nights he had gone without food or how many nights he had gone without his, with his medication. It did not matter anymore. All that David said is that go to the house of Jonathan and bring me his descendants because, so that I may, have, I may give them provision. And Mephibosheth was brought there. Mephibosheth's life changed that day. Mephibosheth's life was turned around that day. He was no longer the same person. Physically, he may have been the same person, but spiritually, emotionally, he was completely different. He had more than enough. He may have wanted to give up. He may never have had any hope of tomorrow. He may never have, he could never look beyond today. Every day mattered to him. But that day, that day, there was a difference in his life. That day, there was a difference in his life. Let me tell you, friends, it does not matter the situation or circumstance that you're going through. It's not how much you pray for. It's how much favor that God has kept aside for you. And understanding that a season is coming. All seasons are not the same. There is a summer season. There is a summer season and it's very hot. And some of us who have not much hair on our heads, we struggle. We have to keep on putting a hat on our heads because it is too hot. But there is also another season that is also cold. It's very cold. Again, we suffer. We have to put another heart to keep ourselves a little bit warm. But then there is also another season that it is just temporary. It's just in between. Are you with me? Every season is different. What season are you in right now? What season are you in right now? Are you in a situation like Mephibosheth where you're feeling completely hopeless? I cannot move from where I am. Are you feeling almost disabled, almost immobile, that there is nothing you can do for yourself. I want to tell you that there is a man called David and he said, he has sent word out there, bring me, bring me the descendants of Jonathan that I may remember them. And this is the word of the Lord this morning reaching out to you. That bring me. And for you to be brought up, you must have that ability never to give up. You must have that capacity of wanting to be, to be noticed. Now, let me tell you this. Back to my football. If I brought those balls here that were completely airless, you'd probably just wipe your feet on those balls. But if they were aerated, I bet you, the first thing you'll want to do is to kick it, even if you don't know how to kick that ball. When you are aerated, you are hopeful. I want to, I want to put this to your minds, that hope, hope is that air in that ball. Hope is that air that is put in that ball. When you are hopeless, you are like that football that has no air in it. It's useless. You cannot use it for anything else. It's ignored. It's thrown to the, to the last corner. It is neglected. It is ignored. But you put air in it. Put hope in yourself and you'll be recognized. Put hope in yourself and people will start noticing you. Put hope in yourself and people will start, where have you been? But you've been there all, all the time without hope. Put hope in yourself. Mephibosheth never gave up, never gave up until David comes in and says, bring me, go to the, to the descendants of Jonathan that I may bless him. And in so blessing this man, Mephibosheth, he aerates him, gives him hope where there was no hope. This morning, it doesn't matter how bad the situation may be. All that I know is that all the things that God has put aside for you, there will be a time, there is a season that is going to bring them to you. Sometimes we pray without knowledge, without understanding, and we assume that, you know, we want those things that are instant. We want the ATM blessings. You know, you go and put in your prayer, and out comes an answer. And there is, there is something called wait. 
And when you are told, you know, still processing, you start having a problem because you wonder what happened to my ATM. That's God's operation. Examine yourself, where are you today? That you may have that connection with God. The second person I want to reference this morning is a man called Gideon. And you know Gideon very well. Gideon, his story is found in Judges and chapter 6. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of God. And for seven years, he allowed the Midianites to help visit these Israelites to repentance. And that meant being tortured. This means being, being, you know, suffering. Whatever they planted, the Midianites would come and harvest. And they would bring their camels, and the camels would come and eat and destroy whatever they had. And on top of that, if anything remained, they would set it on fire. And then they would go back when there is nothing else in Israel. And you remember in, 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 in Gideon chapter 6, chapter 7, when the angel of the Lord comes and calls, you know, a Gideon, a mighty man of valor. And Gideon is looking at, at himself and says, excuse me? Are you talking about me or are you talking about somebody else? How can I be the one when I'm actually hiding here threshing the wheat? Are you talking about somebody else? No, it's actually you. Because you know what? When God speaks to us, when God calls us, he calls us those big names that sometimes you don't understand. Because God is calling you not about who you are right now. He's not calling you about being airless and hopeless. He's calling you looking at your future. Looking at where he has, he's going to project you to. Looking at a place where he is go, he's going to cast you to be. That is what God is calling you. Mighty man of valor. How are you looking at yourself today? Defeated? Wounded? Hopeless? Airless? How about if you compromised with God and you responded to how God is calling you? Mighty man of valor. But let's look at what happened to this mighty, mighty man of valor. When he, was being, when, he, when he started working with God and God was putting to him the strategies that they're going to work, that to work through, he did not look at himself again wondering, what is, how can I be able to do this? For seven years we've struggled. For seven years we've not, been, we, we've not been successful against the Midianites. How can it be? Gideon did not understand one thing. It's a different season. It's a different season. Friends, let me tell you, it does not matter what season you are in right now. It is going to end. That season is passing by. It is not permanent. It is temporary. It may be hot. Yes, I understand and I'm sorry for the heat. But it is passing. It is not going to be there forever. Or maybe it is too cold and things are not working the way they ought to be. It is all right. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. A better day is coming. Tomorrow will be better. Tomorrow is going to be a better day. Today I am not the way I want to be. I am not where I want to be. But you know what? I will not always be this way. Tomorrow I'm going to be better. Look, wait for me tomorrow. Look at me tomorrow and I'll be a different Julius you're seeing, not the Julius you're seeing today. Am I talking to somebody today? The angel of the Lord comes to, to, to him in Judges chapter 6 and verse 12 and says, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And today the Lord is looking at Deliverance Church Kasarani and says, where are the mighty warriors? Where are the mighty warriors? Because that's what the Lord is calling out today. Mighty warriors because he wants to use you. He wants your bounce back power because your bounce back, your bounce back power is what is going to give you victory. Not just for yourself, but for your family, for everybody, because you are going to be an influencer. That's what Gideon did. It wasn't for himself. It was for the children of Israel. And today God is looking out here today at, at Deliverance Church Kasarani. Who are the warriors? Who are these mighty warriors that God is calling out today? Are you so deflated? Are you so hopeless? Have you been terrorized by the Midianites? That everything that you have has always been taken away? You look at your work. You work every day from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock. At the end of the month, you look at what you've earned and where this money you've gone. And you say, I don't understand where this money is going. I'm just a channel. The money just comes through and goes wherever it goes. You're looking at me like that doesn't happen here. It's a reality. It's a different season. It's a different season. Once you understand there is a season, you allow God to move into your life. And you, and you understand that you know, no matter what is going to happen, it is, this is temporary. This is temporary. God has a plan for you. Praise the name of Jesus. God has a plan for you. And you know my God, he looks at things differently. I don't know about your God. When my God looks at me, he has good words for me. He has words of encouragement. He has words of, of assurance. There is a word that will come and say, you know, you're not alone. You are not alone. You may feel like 
It may look like, but you are not alone. I am right there with you. And he says, I will be with you to the end of time. I, 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 I think I'm preaching to a different choir today. Have you ever been alone and you don't even have anybody you can talk to? How about hearing that voice of God and says, mighty man of war, I am with you. I am with you. You are not alone. In your struggles, I am not alone. In your pain, you are not alone. I am I'm with you. Tuko pamoja. Don't feel alone. Don't feel like you've been separated, that your struggles are alone, that it's only you who is going through that. You and you won't go. It's not true. The presence of the Lord is right there with you. Praise the name of Jesus. Gideon in verse 13 uh, claims, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all the wonders God promised to our forefathers? Where are the miracles? Where are the answered prayers? Every Friday I come for the overnight. I come for the prayer meetings. Where are all these prayers that you have been told that they are being answered? Kwani mungu yuko wapi? Where is God? And he says, Lo, I will be with you to the end of the time. Lo, I will be with you to the end of time. Praise the name of Jesus. You are not alone. In verse 14 he says, Go in the strength that you have. It's not in your own capacity. It is in the strength that you have. Let's look back at, at my football. If it doesn't have that bounce back power, if it cannot bounce, it means there is no air. If there is no air, it means there is no hope. If you are hopeless, you have no strength. Have you been, anybody here been without any strength? What do you do? You just sit at home like the children of, of, of Israel in Babylon sitting by the river of Zion, crying, waiting, singing. How can we sing, sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Hopeless. But when strength starts coming to you, even your voice changes. Even your voice changes. The way you talk, the way you give your testimonies. Atakama uko broke, there is no coin in your pocket. You speak like a thousand dollars or a thousand shillings. Because you know it's coming. It's coming. Praise the name of Jesus. Go in the strength you have. So you must be aerated. You must have that bounce back power. If you have no bounce back power, Paul Esana, you will remain down there. Where do you want to be? If you want to be a mighty man of valor, you must have a bounce back power. That's the only way you're going to bounce back. Praise the name of Jesus. It reminds me of uh, uh, the poor widow in uh, uh, 2 Kings and chapter 4. This lady, I, I really love this widow. This widow had nothing. And everything that she was, she was so poor that even her language, the verbs that she was using to describe herself were, were little, were pitiful. She said, I have, when Elisha comes and says, you know, Give me bread or go bake for me bread. And this lady says, I have nothing. I have just some little sticks, some little flour. I have a little pot. Everything, everything to her was little. She had, she had despised herself. I pray that that is not somebody I'm talking to this morning. Say, I have a big pot. I have a lot of oil. I have, it may not look like, but it is coming. Praise the name of Jesus. Because you know what? What you speak is what comes. If you speak little, that is what's going to, uh, to happen. But this woman did not know that God had already spoken through Elisha and said that there's a woman there who is going to provide for you. And so he, he's, when Elisha goes and asks for bread, he knows that she, she has some, some flour. So when she's saying that I have, I have only a little flour, he actually says, okay, you go with that little flour, fix for me a bread. And then the rest, go and fix for yourself and your son. Sasa kweli yon yunga kidogo. Give, fix for me what you have right now for myself and then go and fix for the others. Why do we limit ourselves? We, lim we limit ourselves because we, we are afraid and when we are fearing, it means that we are lacking hope. When you lack hope, you cannot bounce back. You are just saying, I will, I will use what I have, the flood that I have and then I wait to die. That's what this woman's testimony, that's what she wanted. I, that's nobody in Deliverance Church Kasarani. You are saying that I want my bounce back power. I have a bigger vision. God has more use for me. You are like Mephibosheth, you are saying, you know, I may be here for now, but I'm rising up. Praise the name of Jesus. I may not be able to move on my own, but guess what? I have a voice that I can project. I can testify. I can speak to somebody. Praise the name of Jesus. You are not alone. And your life is not little. What you have is not little because God can even use that what you have to bounce you back in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Finally, I want to talk about this man called Joseph. We know Joseph. 
Joseph is a very good character. He went through everything that humanity could possibly go through. Joseph was, the, was his father's favorite, and because of this, his brothers hated him. They would not have kind words towards him. They, everything they said about him was negative. And I know you people, you, the way you grew up, you grew up as good children. You never said anything wrong about your siblings. God bless you. He was a dreamer and unafraid to share his dreams with his families. The brothers threatened him with murder, sold him into slavery, you know, to some traders, imprisoned in a dungeon on false accusations. And when he thought his time to be set free had come, when he was there in jail after helping somebody, it didn't come because the cupbearer whom he had helped to interpret his dream forgot him. It's okay to be forgotten. But this cupbearer, Jameni, for two years he forgot his promise. Two years! It's like when you borrow money and say, I'll bring it tomorrow, and you never pay it back. And every time you meet this person, it's tomorrow. Tomorrow. Am I speaking to somebody? Tomorrow. Higher. Let's go back to this guy. The cupbearer forgot that he had a promise that he would go and speak to the, to, the, to the people on the outside so that he may be released, so that Joseph may be released. But this man forgot him until an opportunity presented himself where the, 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 the Pharaoh needed a, the, his dream to be interpreted. And when he was finally released, his life was, became different what, because everything that you touch was was changing. Everything that was touching was being blessed. Everything that was touching was increasing. His ideas was, were not just philosophical, but the things that were practical and they were blessing to, G, to Egypt. Now the thing with, that, with this Joseph is that there was one thing that, if you read that, read, read that text, there's one thing that you will not find there. That he cried or he mourned or he lamented. Or something negative that Joseph did. Joseph did not do that. In all those You'll not hear that he complained about his brothers throwing him into the ditch. You'll not hear him that he complained that he was sold into slavery. You'll not hear Joseph complaining that his master's uh, wife is accusing him falsely. You'll not hear complaining that the cupbearer forgot him for two years in jail. What is the secret to Joseph? What was his secret? His secret was that you will not steal my joy. You will not deflate me. Because, you know, every time you complain, you are deflating yourself. Every time there is your mouth opens up to complain about anything, you are deflating yourself. You are removing the air from yourself. And as you remove your air in, your, in, your, in yourself, what becomes? You become smaller. And the thing that is ahead of you becomes even bigger. What Joseph did, he said, there's one thing I'm going to do that I have control over myself. I have the capacity to control my bounce back power. I refuse to be downcast. I refuse to remain there. I will always maintain my bounce back power. And that's why he never lost hope in God. He never lost hope. He never complained. Could he? He had opportunities to complain. He, he was being mistreated. Everything was working against him. He probably would have gone, won his case in a court of law or whichever court that there, there would be. But it wasn't necessary for him. He understood that I have a comeback power. He understood that he had that bounce, and he never lost in God. He never complained or griped on how unfaithful people are. You help them, and they say, you know, I'll pay back your good deeds, and you never see them again for the rest of your life. But he didn't complain. Even when he was being released, it's not that he went to the cup bearer and said, you know, all these years, what happened? But when you're so No, he just went and did whatever he was doing. All the blessings that came to Joseph came through the Pharaoh. It's not through a favor. It came through a channel because he never lost his hope. Praise the name of Jesus. He never lost his, his hope. And today, friends, I want us to examine ourselves one last time. Let's look at our season. Which season are you in? How have you been responding in that season? Have you been responding by looking at things negatively or looking at things, seeing where you ought to be and where you are right now and then opening your mouth in complaints and deflating yourself more and more and more. Where do you find yourself? I want to challenge you that if that is you, that you need to change your story. Because if you don't change your story, if you don't, if you don't stop deflating yourself, you're reducing that hope in you. And once that hope is gone, that is, you, you're beyond help. Do not lose hope. Tomorrow is a better day. Praise the name of Jesus. Do not lose hope. God has not forgotten you. 
Do not lose hope if in fact the testament that you should have. If God can bless you, it is a testament that he can bless me. If God saw you, then God can see me. If God healed you, it means God can heal me. I will not open my mouth to belittle anybody. I will not go, I'm not going to open my mouth to compare myself with anybody. I'm going to use it as a stone to bounce back. Kama mungu alikubariki, ata minta barikiwa. If God saw you through the situation that the way I know it, he will see me through. Praise the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter how long it's going to take, God will do it for you. Bwana sifiwe sana. If God can see somebody through, if God remembered this cup bearer, Joseph knew my day will come. It may be today, it may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but it is going to come. We must keep our hope alive. We must keep our hope alive. Do not give up. Do not lose hope. Many of us lavish in our pain, in our sorrows, because we are comparing ourselves with others. But I'm encouraging you today. And I'm speaking words of life to you that do not give up. If you are to compare yourself with anybody else, let your comparison be as you did for so and so. I now know without a doubt you can do it for me. If so and so was promoted, I too, Bishop, can be promoted. If so and so actually found a spouse, now we let you mingi. If God remembered so and so, atamimi, I'll be remembered. Praise the name of Jesus. If so and so found a job, after looking for that job for 10 years, we saw him, we knew him in this church. If God Kabisa gave this man a job, he will give me a job as well. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Church, do not lose hope. If there is anything I want to take, uh, I want you to take away this morning, is that I will not lose hope. Amen. I have, because if you lose hope, you cannot bounce. So I will not allow myself to be deflated. I'm going to inflate myself with hope. No matter what. Ata iwe VP. I am not to, I'm not going to die hopeless. I am going to bounce back. If others are bouncing, I too am going to bounce. Bonus fear sana. Let's rise on our feet, shall we? Bonus if you're sana. Today I want to pray for people who are in a situation where they feel that their bounce back power has been deflated. And I know one thing that God is at work in this church. And I know that God is at work in our midst right now. You know the situation, you know the circumstance. All that I'm asking you to do today is to have hope. In your mind, I'm asking you to see, remember somebody who has been blessed. I'm asking you to remember somebody, put in your mind somebody who was in a situa particular situation, but now is no longer there, that things have worked better for him. I want you to put that person's mind, uh, name in your mind right now. Remember that person. Remember that person, because that person now becomes your igniter to your faith, becomes an igniter to your hope. Put that person in your mind. See that person, who, that opportunity, that he never had an opportunity, and he got an opportunity. And as we pray, I'm not praying that you become that person. I'm going to pray that the same way that God remembered him or her or they, the same God will remember you today in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for this morning. We want to thank you for your presence, dear God, and we want to thank you for the word. Father, this morning I want to pray for this congregation. I want to pray that, Lord Jesus Christ, even as we put that, that name, that individual in our minds, people we know that, Lord, you have blessed, oh God, people that you remembered, people that you even gave up on, but God, you saw them through. And this morning, Lord Jesus Christ, we are praying that, God, if you saw them through, if God, you blessed them, if God, you raised them up, we too, that you raise us in our, in our moment of need. And so, Father, today we come with a celebratory spirit, oh God. We are praying that, God, you may ignite us with hope in the name of Jesus. We, 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 we pray that God you may give us a strength, oh God, to look ahead, oh God, because we do know that God, you're a promise keeper. You're a God who keeps your word. And if you say you're going to come through for us, we know that you'll come through for us. This morning, I pray for them that, Lord, are going through situations in their lives. Maybe situations that are difficult. Situations that, Lord, they cannot even be able to explain. Situations that, Lord, they cannot even be able to talk to anybody about. I am praying that in the name of Jesus. You who sees in secret, Father, may you see them through in the name of Jesus. I am praying for financial needs, oh God. I am praying, Lord Jesus Christ, for situations that, Lord Jesus Christ, have been manifested here this morning. In the name of Jesus. God, may you see your people through in the name of Jesus. Above everything else, oh God, I am praying that, God, the 
miracles that you'll perform in this church this morning. That, Lord, the answers that, Lord, you'll provide to people this morning, Father, that there will be a testament of what you're going to do, not just in this church, but also in our communities, to our relatives, to our brothers and sisters, to the people that you work with, because, God, we cannot keep quiet of your blessings in us, O oh God. Father, we want to worship you and you bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. This morning, I want to pray for anybody in this church this morning who feels that yet my life, I need to give my life to the Lord. I cannot manage on my own. I can't do this alone anymore. I need you, Savior. I need the Saviors. And if you're here this morning and you feel that I need a prayer, I need somebody to pray for me, lift up your hand and we'll pray together. Is there any? Is there any? Is there any in this church? One last time. Is there any? Jehovah, we thank you for your presence. Thank you, there, thank you, there, brother. God bless you. We, Father, we are thanking you this morning. We thank you for your presence. We are praying because God, you are the God who changes hearts. We thank you because God, you are the Savior, you are the Deliverer. And this morning, we are praying for this brother in the name of Jesus, that God, you may minister to him in the name of the Lord. That God, you may watch over him. That God, you may shield him, O God. That God, you may give him hope, Lord, in the in, at the point of his need, O God, where he may feel hopeless and he may feel that Lord, there is no future. I am praying that God, you may give him that future in the name of Jesus Christ. You may change his mindset. Oh God, that God may be able to, link, to be linked in the mindset of Christ in the name of Jesus. We pray for his salvation. We pray for his life today. We pray for his life tomorrow. We pray for his dreams. We pray, Lord Jesus Christ, for his entire life that God will change him, oh God. And church, I want you to join, join me even as we, we pray together with him and join this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you today as a repentant, repenting for my sins. For what I have done. Forgive me. Deliver me. Write my name in the book of life. That I might have life to meet with you. In Jesus name I pray. Give the Lord a hand of praise if you believe that. May God bless you.